Next, we have Robert Schaefer, who is running for Lexington County Council. How's everybody tonight? Good. Very good. Okay, I want to do this real quickly. This big yellow zone, and I'm going to leave this up here, but this big yellow zone is District 4 of County Council. It is the Springdale area. It is the Oak Grove community. It is part of the town of Lexington. It's got so many split precincts in it, it'll make you dizzy when you try to figure out where you live and what you're about and what you're supposed to do. I'll tell you something interesting. When you look at County Council District 4, it also straddles two school districts. There's part of school district one, there's part of school district two in it. There's actually part of three municipalities in it outside of the county. There's part of the town of Lexington, there's all of Springdale, and there's a very small sliver of West Columbia. So, does it sound like an area that's got a few conflicts? Yeah. It does. Yeah. So, but that's here. But now we're going to talk about it a little bit more in a second. How many of you have looked at your property tax bill and not really just had an argument with it. <laughs> it's mostly for schools. Well, it is mostly for schools, but you know, one of the things, that, and then we were talking about this a little bit with school funding, but this happens with our county council budget as well. The school board's got two lines mm -hmm. on our property tax bills. Are they the only ones? No, they're not. Our recreation commissions, and Lexington, in its wisdom, has how many recreation commissions? Two. Two. Lexington County has a Lexington Recreation Commission and an Irmo Chapin Recreation Commission. So that's how many administration positions that have to be held? Two. Everything's in duplicity there. Mm -hmm. So we got, we got some issue there. But you look at these type of things, they have two items, two line items on your tax bill. And line item one, is their operating budget. Line item two is their bond revenue budget. And the way we were talking about assessed value a little bit ago in school funding, the same thing is true in these bonds. When the assessed value in the county goes up, each of these agencies have the ability to borrow more money. Now, how do they borrow money and not impact their operating budget? Because they end up with more facilities to run which means they need more money for maintenance, which means they're, they're needing more staff. Now, how many of you have heard your county council person, <coughs> any of the nine, we, we, we won't be picky, how many of them have, have you heard say, we're doing more with less? <laughs> yeah. I mean, have you heard that from a county council person lately? Yeah. We're doing more with less. Okay. Yeah. Now, we're doing more with less, and are you paying less in taxes? Twice. Do, do you find a problem with that statement then? Mm -hmm. We're doing more with less, but you're paying more for it. It's really what they should be saying. That's the line that your county council people right now are not saying. They're not being truthful with you on. We've got to get some truth back into county council. We've got to look at each one of these line items and say, let's be more than just a session. Now, how many of you have talked to your county council person and you've heard this statement? If you would only attend the meeting, you would know. <laughs> how many of you have heard that? Oh, yeah. well, okay. They don't say that. Okay, now, now, I know, they can't say it to you because you're there. Now, how is that responsive representation of the people? Isn't it the job of our elected officials, the people that we have put our faith and our trust into for so long, isn't it their job to be reporting to us? Mm -hmm. And then when you do go to the meeting... It's at four. A lot of people are working at four. Yeah, a lot of people are still working at four. So mm -hmm. not, only, not only do they try to make it where you can't, but what's the first thing you got to do when you go to a county council meeting and you want to talk about the subject that they have selected for today? You've got to sign up. You've got to tell them who you are, where you live, what your zip code is, right? Mm -hmm. And what else is on that little rule list that they give you at, at the front of the page? Ten minutes or something. It, it limits you your time. No mm -hmm. questions. No questions. Mm -hmm. And by the way, what I just asked you to do, raise your hands. Can't do it. You can't do it. 
They want to they pigeonhole you down to what they want to hear because their decision's already been made. Right. Yeah, the executive exactly. session. That's where they mm -hmm. already decided what they're going to do. Executive session. And there is a need for executive session. We're not going to debate that because there are some things that do need to be discussed in an open and frank discussion between the councilmen. But when they come time to public forum, <clears throat> there needs to be more input. Yes. There, response. Just, th th yeah. I mean, this is yeah. what the this is yeah. citizen yeah. government. Mm -hmm. There needs to be more input. And I mean, and that's just the bottom line of why I'm running. Because we need responsive <laughs> representation. You know, I, I don't see why we don't see more open town hall type discussions locally with our representatives. So one of the things that I would like to do is I'm, I'm going to create a nice little website for myself and we're just going to run a blog mm. where mm. I can sit there and tell you this is what's happened while I'm on council yes. and this is where we can interact with each other. We don't need Facebook for that. We can do it ourselves inside of our own little page. We can have open discussions between us. See, we don't need to wait until it's election time to have a politician show up and tell us how good they are, how much they've done for us, how they're doing more with less with more of our money. We don't need to wait for two years or four years to see them come around. They should be visible. They should be active. They should be out there. And when you ask them a question, how about an answer? Now, how about an answer that says, I'm not an expert on government? Have you ever heard a county council person say that? I'm, I'm just an average citizen. I'm not an expert on government. Mm -mm. If not, I suggest that you type in my opponent's name into YouTube and listen. <laughs> so, yeah, that's right. <laughs> because that is one of her responses. These are serious times. Each of us is facing serious issues with, within our own personal lives, within each of our companies in each day that we live. We don't really have time for a learning curve. We need someone who is willing to look at a situation, make a decision, and cast a vote. We have, some, we have a need for people in county council who are willing to look at their friends and their neighbors, the people sitting beside them on the church pew, and say, what do you think? And last but not least, Do we believe that all good ideas start at government? <laughs> Man, you notice that? No hands go up. <laughs> Tell me the last good idea that came from government, that started with government. The American Revolution. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I what you think. <laughs> you know, that's the problem, though. We, we do have. And I've said this before, and I'll continue to say it again. You know, there's that old joke, and we've all heard so many politicians use it. Hi, I'm so-and-so, I'm from the federal government, or I'm from the state government, I'm, I'm from the county government, and I'm here to help. <laughs> well, see, my friends, the problem is as Republicans and as conservatives, as libertarians, we get it, it's a joke. The problem is the liberals don't. They think it's gospel. They think it's the truth. <clears throat> and that's what we have got to stop. So when you look at that property tax bill, again, count the number of agencies that have the ability to go up. Now, you know what the worst part about that is, about that assessed value? It's like a credit card. It is like a credit card whose credit limit keeps getting pulled up. Now, if you had a credit card that had, say, a $10,000 limit on it, and you kept $9,000 on it all the time, what does that do to your personal credit score? It lowers it. You're a risk because you've got too much debt to available limit. But for some reason, the government, that's not a bad thing. <coughs> so they keep increasing. And that increases their operating costs.
So we need to look at that. Look at your property tax bills. Go home. You can, you can pull them up on the Lexington County website, whether it's the one for your home or the one for your car. And just look at that. And look at how much of what you pay in your property taxes are going to debt servicing. And then ask them this simple question. When do we get out of debt? Well, how do we get out of debt when you talk about expanding the Pillion Airport? By, by the way, how many of you have been to the very busy <laughs> Pillion Airport? <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, there the yes. Oh, you missed this discussion. Oh, okay. So, and who owns the Pillion Airport? We do. Lexington County. Now, why? It was for sale. Oh, that's such a good reason for government to go and jump in and do something. It's for sale. <laughs> so we have we have an airport. Now, what did they say when, when they bought this airport? We need to expand. We, we now, we, oh, that's what they're saying now. But, you know, I actually had a county council person, now I won't mention any name, but I had a county council person tell me, well, you know, we've got all these rich horse breeders that fly into Aiken County. Not by way of Pillion. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I pointed that out, that there's this beautiful private airport in Aiken County, right there at US 1 and I-20, that's actually much larger than Owens Field is here in Columbia. I guess I shouldn't have said that, because right now what does county council want to do? They want to widen it, widen the runways, and lengthen the runway so that we can land even fancier private jets. With horse trailers? <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for that development. So we want to expand the busy billion airports. Now let me ask you a question. You're now CEOs of large multinational corporations, and you're looking at coming to the Lexington Saxagatha Commerce Park. Where are you going to land your plane? Here's your choices. Owens Field, downtown Columbia, Columbia Metropolitan Airport, just a few convenient moments away from the industrial park, or the big bustling town of Pillion. Great metropolitan <laughs> <laughs> well, gosh darn, you can't land your Learjet there because it's not wide enough and not long enough. Now, how, how did Lexington County get into the industrial park business? There was a bond, and it was for how much? Anybody remember? Does the number 15 million ring a bell? Mm. So now the question is, what have, 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 have we sold any land in the, in the park? Okay, let me ask you a question. Have we given land away to any Fortune 500 companies that have investment bankers and bondholders and all that? Oh, yeah. So what does Lexington County now want to do? Build one in Chapin. Build one in Chapin. Eight Good million answer. Dollars. Yes. Eight now, million more dollars. Eight million more dollars that they, they want to build. Now, there's not a person in this room who is against the jobs that are being created at any of these locations. But now I will tell you this, in, inside of my own company, we're downsizing one of our departments right now because of Amazon. And that downsizing, let, let's use the other term, we're releasing employees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is exactly what I said would happen last year. I don't like being right all the time, especially when it comes to someone's livelihood. But that's a Main Street job that we lost to investment bankers. Now, the $8 million Chapin part Final approval tonight. Final approval is tonight, so we can't wait to see that. Now, do you know what is just a few minutes up the road from that Chapin property? Newberry. Newberry's Industrial Park. So now you want to have two parks within a short ride of each other in two separate counties. Now, what does that mean? You get Double sets of people. To Competition. Play. That's exactly the word. So now you're going to have two county councils going after the same prospect, and it's going to be a question of what? 
Who can give the most away? Now, simple question. Who in this room has something that they want to give away to government right now? Two cents? No, no pushing. No pushing. All contributions to the government accepted. Okay, well in that case, then I, I'm going to do the simple thing. I'm, go, I'm not going to ask you to give something away. I'm going to ask you to invest something. I'm going to ask you to invest something in yourselves. I'm going to ask you to invest your time, your energy, your efforts. I'm even going to ask you to invest your checkbook a little bit and support the candidates who have offered themselves to help remedy these situations. Because unfortunately, as much as we'd like to think that running for office is cheap, it's not. It's not. You know, I upset. I remember eight years ago, I was sitting in a room with Tommy Windsor over in Lexington, and you and I were talking to a candidate for this very seat. You, you remember that? So, Tommy, it's your fault I'm running. <laughs> it, it, it got me. I'll accept full responsibility. Thank you, sir. <laughs> we, we need your help. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up here beside the map, I'm going to put an envelope. It's self-addressed, it's even stamped. And I'm going to ask you to take one tonight, take two tonight, take three tonight. And send what you can. Pass it to your friends. Send what they can. And ask for their support. We're going to do this as much on a shoestring budget as we possibly can, but you know what? Signs cost money. And gosh darn, they don't like to print them until you pay for them. Mm -hmm. Postage to the post office for mail pieces. They want it up front. I need your help. I'm here to ask for it. Keep in mind what I've, had, what I've said. Yes? Let me ask you a question. Is any of uh, what you were talking about tonight, the airport and any of that, in a foreign trade zone? The pillion is not in a foreign <coughs> trade zone. Okay. The only thing far and I know what's going on in the building right now is uh, the illegal immigration that is settling in the area and the, and the drug and meth labs that are popping up. Yeah. I know we got a foreign trade zone over here by the airport. That's right. Any other questions? Robert. Yes. I'm embarrassed to ask this because I don't already know, but how many people besides yourself do we have running against the current council members? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. Um, Right now, I, I am running against um, Debbie Summers, All right. who is the incumbent. Four years ago, she had no opposition. Uh -huh. wow. No wonder she got in. She had <laughs> zero opposition. Eight years ago, she had very minor opposition, but she had the endorsement of the person that she replaced. And then, of course, Corey is running against oh, that's Johnny. Right. Corey's running. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Cor Corey's running against Mr. Jeff Cook. Yeah, I knew that. I just, okay. And then uh, we have one other gentleman who is running against an incumbent councilman. Um, Kiesler. Anthony Kiesler. Yeah. So we, we've got we've got a few, but not many. So the we bad, got three. Bad, well, West, but, you know, so we got three three West people running against. The there are West six running. people running oh, okay. for Smokey Davis's open seat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is an open seat. So yeah, so there are six people running for that. Oh, okay. Um, anybody but Scott Adams. <laughs> Who are you? Who, by the way, did not file his economic interest form? Oh, well, he just filed by. So. But he's got a ton of money. He's probably the best finance candidate in the race. He is. Um, one more question. If you talked about dual, uh, what in the early part of your talk, dual recreation commissions. If you if you get elected, can you look at trying to eliminate one of those? Is, or is it impossible to get these things dismantled? One I think I think one of the first things that we need to do on county council is take a look at each agency and the, yeah and and make it do a sunset review. Yeah. Make it justify each of its activities and actions along the way. Make it justify every employee. 
make it justify every piece of real estate, every piece of equipment that they have. Yeah. And I think until that type of true open forum audit is done, you'll, you'll never see anything else good happen. Okay. Well.